Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. My name is Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Arpit Joshipura, who is Vice President, Product Management and Marketing, Dell Networking and NFV. Arpit, welcome. It's a sizable job title, that, but then in NFV and networking, job titles do tend to be a bit long. Um, yours, is, yours is no exception, but very interesting technologies and very interesting in the state of the market. I'd like to begin by asking you this. NFV sprang more or less fully formed into the world a couple of years ago, whereas SDN had a rather slower gestation. And they've always been linked together, a bit like Castor and Pollux, the heavenly twins. You know, they're <laughs> together, not quite conjoined, but one is reliant to some extent upon the other. And as things have changed over the past, let's say, 12 months or so, you, they were never mentioned together, even though they were together. Now they're talking about NFV and SDN um, as being simultaneously vital to the new carrier ecosystem. Do you think that one of those technologies is more equal than the other? Well, first of all, let me tell you, um, NFV requires an SDN beneath it. So I've always been you know, vocal about SDN and the paths enterprise can take to get to SDN. And there are three paths. There was an open flow path, there was a programmability path, and then there was an overlay path. Sure. And what we did at Dell was we announced something called open networking that allowed a completely disaggregated path where you take standard switches and load your OS, our operating system, to get, get it completely open, right? All these flavors essentially get you to SDN. Now, NFV is SDN's best use case. NFV is moving beyond its first phase. We've had the hype cycle, which has died away, but there's a residue, a real residue, of reality behind all of this. And we're seeing, we're moving beyond proofs of concept and trialing into real-world implementation of NFV. For someone, an operator, or whatever it may, may be approaching the technology, what would you regard as a roadmap, the practical steps you would take to maximize the capabilities of NFV in your organization? That's a very good question. I have been talking to pretty much uh, the, you know, almost all of the top carriers globally. And uh, one of the things we have done as Dell is bring, you know, both sides of the organization in the same room. The CIO side, the traditional IT organization, as well as the network side, and bring them in the same room when we discuss NFV because there's a lot of differences and a lot of similarities. So the way I have outlined you know, practical steps to making NFV a reality are very simple, right? And there are you know, five steps. So let me just go through the five steps very, very quickly. Sure. The first step is learn from what enterprise SDN has evolved to, right? Learn from how server virtualization happened, network virtualization, storage virtualization, so SDN, SDS, etc. how the infrastructure came about, whether it's through VMware, Microsoft, OpenStack, containers, etc. Learn that and make sure you apply those principles so that you have a common technology uh, framework to discuss between the two organizations. So that's step number one, mm -hmm. common technology framework. Step number two is get to a com common vocabulary. The IT side talks workloads, the carrier side talks services, 4G, 5G, LTE, right? Here it's SAP, HANA, Oracle, right? They're all applications at the end of the day. And the two architectures lead to a same common underlying infrastructure. And so establish a common vocabulary, and that's the only way the two organizations will be able to talk. So that's step number two. Step number three is get to the right use case and the right architecture for your specific need. And one size does not fit all. There are carriers who may own the fiber. There are carriers who would have just mobile customers, right? There are carriers who would just go after business services. So each of these have a specific use case, whether it's you know IMS, whether it's EPC, whether it's CPE, right? All these terminologies are coming very naturally to a lot of the carriers now, because you know people know what what they're doing. But the reality is, whether you centralize it in a data center or distribute it uh, all the way to the uh, users, is your choice, and we can help help you with that. But that's step number three: right architecture, right use case. 
and that will imply you know how the the specific pieces come together right mm -hmm. so this is where i think most of the industry is right now the fourth step is you know the hard one how do organizations come together how can i bring a cio and a cto organization together so we're starting to see carriers form cloud groups we're starting to see people coming together right whether the server admin, storage admin, network admin, converged admin takes over, or whether the network administrator on the on the carrier side takes over, remains to be seen. We've seen you know both models work. Um, both of them have a learning curve, right? As I said, right? These guys have never bought a server; they've always bought black boxes, um, and now they're using you know compute pods. So there's a organizational dynamic that is happening and I think that has to be fixed strategically not tactically. Is that do you think perhaps the biggest stumbling block to the whole thing? Absolutely and carriers who are successful or have shown uh, resilience to the hype cycle you were talking about uh, they have solved this problem first okay they have made a conscious call that my IT department is going to run the show so they will take out pieces of data centers and carve it as a private cloud or racks of you know equipment mm -hmm. that are loaned to their own internal staff that you host services the VNFs for. So that model can work. So people who have done that have been successful and I think that's that's the most important barrier that again in this in 2015 that's what uh, carriers will overcome right? with our help obviously. And then the fifth step that is, is kind of out there is, you know, what's your appetite for open, right? I've been saying, you know, open is the new proprietary, right? <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and kind of there's, there's this definitions of open, right? You could be open at a black box level, give two wires and, oh, yeah, I can interpret with other. Um, but then the, the, the next degree of openness is really, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's my ecosystem and it's my vendor enhanced stack, right? And this is where most of the uh, vendors are today, right? It's like, oh, this is my NFE solution. My concern with that is, you know, why would a carrier go from a black box that they used to buy from six vendors to another black box mm. that just happens to be on an x86? right so so that's kind of where most of the vendors are where Dell and others want to see this industry go is more towards the best of breed where you can get the maximum choice and flexibility and eventually to open standards and open source open source is a faster way to get it with OPNFV Dell being a founding platinum member you can get there and then you get to the complete standardized option and then we're, we're looking at about three years to get there but the but the uh, standards are and open source is happening right now this year. So if you follow or if an organization, a carrier, whatever it may be, network operator follows those five steps, it is more or less a guaranteed way to get where you want to be, provided you don't lose focus. Absolutely. And as, as we discussed, the fourth step is the stumbling block. And the, the fifth step is a function of who do they want to believe in the vendor ecosystem. <laughs> Right? Do you believe someone who wants to move the world towards a completely open environment? Do you want to believe someone who wants to market that they're open but lock it? Or do you want to believe your traditional vendors that have locked the system for the last 20 years? Right? So, you know, are you, if you're a believer of NFE, you have two choices. Right? If you're not, stick with what you have. Right? And then you don't get the agility and the TCO savings and all the services incremental revenue, which we all love, right? And we, we're all excited about as, a, as, a, as thought leaders in the industry. Really interesting practical guide to the way to do it. I think if people would like to watch this and be very, very interested to hear what you have to say. So, Apit Joshipura, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.